Lounge and Sun. Welcome back to another episode of the Comic Lounge Podcast. I'm the immortal Ryan Fist with my friendly neighborhood Dillbot, as always. And uh, we're continuing our fables. Fables, right? Uh, volume- fables, fables, fables. Yeah, volumes 15 and 16, uh, just before we hit that record button, Dylan and I decided we're just going to power through to get through fables. We figured let's just knock this out over the next three weeks. Um, instead of like spacing it out, because we were already going to read two more volumes for next week, and then there was only going to be two episodes. So it's like, why not? Might just, as well. You know, Might and well. and yeah. uh, and like also, like I said uh, before we hit uh, start recording, everybody watching or listening hasn't been following along and isn't watching that you guys are. It's not really going to make a difference. You just won't, <laughs> you just won't be getting an extra video, I guess, for the next four right. weeks. So, right. Um, but luckily, you'll still have our weekly comic stuff. Yeah, Yeah, because we still have, you know, we got our Monday episodes that, you know, like we were doing Feature Day, we're going to be talking about Infinite Frontier, I think we're going to have a, the end of WandaVision episode is coming up too, that'll be on, uh, I might drop that on a weekend. uh, (laughs) I tried watching it, I tried watching it last night, after 15 minutes of of, of Disney Plus telling me, oh, the, uh, the internet connection is slow because everybody's trying to watch it, friggin', I started watching it, I saw like the first five minutes and fell asleep. (laughs) I mean, I'm excited to see it every week, but I'm like, uh, I'm not trying to stay up late and I'm not um, trying to deal with all that bullshit either, you know? So I usually like, since now Friday is my only day off, I'm just like, okay, you know, we record, help Riley, you know, my kid with her school. And when I'm fucking uh, doing my household chores, (laughs) that's what I want. I'm folding laundry and I'm watching fucking WandaVision. It's funny because last week, last week, my wife texted me. Uh, and she was like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm folding laundry and watching anime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing a Naruto rewatch because uh, I never finished the first Naruto series and I've mm-hmm. never watched Shippuden. So like I'm on episode like 89 or some shit and it's like 150 episodes. So almost there. Dang, that's a lot. Yeah. I'm not really, I've never really been into anime. I've watched a lot. I've watched a good amount, but like I've never watched a full series. The only series I've watched in completion, which is because it's short, is Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop is good. Um, Samurai Champloo was good. Yeah. Uh, but you should check out Naruto, Doug. Like, I, I feel like you'd really dig it. It's like, okay. It gets, it gets crazy at some points. Like, holy shit. The, 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 the point I am in the series is like the farthest I've ever gotten. Yeah, anyway. I, I feel like my I, like anime recommendations and manga recommend like my list is like infinite. There's so much for yeah. me to check out and read. Which side note I was gonna bring up to your attention. Have you ever read Monster by Naoki, Naoki Urasawa? I can't say that I have. Okay, we're gonna read that for the podcast soon. I just oh, got I, I read it over I read it over the pandemic, like the beginning. I Nick let me borrow it all, but I don't own it. So I just bought the first book yesterday so i'm like oh that'd be cool to like i kind of want to read it again already like it was that oh, good? okay okay yeah no that'd be good that'd be good to, to, to switch it up it'll kind of be like our novel uh our novel that we're that we never read that we never, that we never fucking started oh, we're, you know we're what going, i did start we're coming last, into march <laughs> yeah you know what i did start last night was true believer the rise and fall of stan lee i heard that there's some crazy stuff in there about what's his name um editor I'm not gonna escape my, escape my memory. Roy right Thomas. I remember, like, huh? I think Roy so. Thomas. I don't. I, I think is it, it is Roy Thomas. Or, yeah. or is it Jim Shooter? No, I think it's Roy Thomas. I heard there's some crazy stuff. Like, wh- whoever, whoever was more more hated out of the two. Jim like, Shooter. Uh, yeah. I, I saw that yeah. post too. I I pre-ordered the book. I forgot that I, yeah. I completely forgot I ordered it. And then I came home from work one day. I was like, what the fuck? Like, it, it's out. Like, I had no. I mean, I knew it was supposed to come out soon, but I completely. I, I was like, oh, I got to order it, and then it was sitting there, uh, you know. And um, <laughs> I started it. I started it last night, and, and it's already not holding any punches, dude. It's like, fuck. All right, I'm I'm down for this ride. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, there's a Neil Gaiman quote on the back too. Like, <laughs> there's some really big people that are like have read this and have given quotes on the book, and I'm here for it. I look, I have my opinions about Stan Lee after i've learned a lot of stuff right like i i used to growing up like probably same with you like oh stan lee like he's the godfather of the marvel universe like he created all this stuff and then you get older and you start hearing and reading about stuff and you fuck jack kirby you know like yeah yeah i mean speaking you know like i showed you before speaking of kirby dude you know this fucking absolute fourth world it's a fucking mother box dude 
This is a yeah. mother bot. That shit's sick. That shit's so sick, dude. So, like, I, I love Kirby, and this book is set to just, like, I have a feeling it's going to just drop some fucking bombs. And I'm sure that there's, you know, people, I mean, this information's out there, right? But, like, this dude is a journalist that just fucking, I mean, shit Deep about it. He dove into it. Stuff about his daughter, stuff about his, I mean, oh, it's it's like I'm only 17 pages in, and I'm and I almost didn't want to stop reading, but it was late, and I'm like, "Fuck, I got to get up early." So, I'll let you know more about it as I as I go on. Um, but yeah, anybody listening, uh, it's definitely if you're a comic book fan, pick that shit up, dude. I gotta check. Um, out. Yeah, but let's talk fables. All right. Rose Red right. is volume 15, as the title says. It's mainly focused on her, and then volume 16 is Super Team, and um, I'm both I'm are really- fucking fantastic. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Holy just, crap. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's go, dude. Talk talk to All talk. right. Okay, so this is so 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 basically Rose Red starts off with Rose Red and she's basically in this deep, deep, deep state of depression because she lost Boy Blue. And with that, she's losing her power hold over the farm, all while there is just little factions going on, especially with the added mix of not only the the fables of Fable Town, but also friggin' Geppetto being up in Ge- just Geppetto being up in the mix. So yeah. there's just a lot of dissension in the ranks right now. It's like right? Game of Thrones vibes a little bit. Yeah, it's a getting little there. Bit. No, you know it, yeah, I mean? like, it's it's pretty crazy. Like little secret midnight meetings in the woods and uh, friggin' all sorts of weird little plans going on. But I, well, I mean, obviously. The, there, there's to me there's three stands out, standouts to this, and obviously Rose Red being one of them, Snow White being another one, and Frau Toten Kinder. But we'll get to Frau Toten Kinder after we talk about uh, yeah. Rose Red and um, Snow White. So, 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 so basically, I love this because we kind of get a retelling of the Snow White tale that everybody's so. You know, everyone's super familiar with you know the whole seven dwarves thing, the wicked stepmother, mm-hmm. the whole. It's like a it's like a complete, utter retelling about it, and I'm here for it, dude. That that was that was some fantastic writing there. Um, oh yeah, dude. It's you know, cool because you you Rose Red is now in the mix. We never, you know I didn't know about Rose Red before this fucking book. Didn't yeah. know a thing about her. Her mom has has magic powers. Yeah, you know what I mean? Was, like yeah. they both have magic within them. And that was a new addition. Like, we don't even learn that until here about Rose Red yeah. having, like, magic powers kind of within her. Same with Snow White. And how powerful they really are. And this is the first inklings we're getting of that, you yeah. know? Um, yeah, yeah. And their first meetings with, like, a dwarf. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of foreboding of, like, what will happen later on with Snow White. And it's, it's crazy. What, what's really crazy about it, too, it's, um, you know, it really, it, really, it really deep dives into the relationship or lack thereof that Snow White and Rose Red had. Now, you know, in, in the beginning, when we first were first introduced to Rose Red, there was this whole thing about, you know, oh, you left me, you promised me you never would, and you became the more popular fable, and, you know, everybody forgot about me. And then it got to the point where it, it's, it's, it, it's kind of true because I didn't know about Rose Red, you didn't know about Rose Red, and I liked how Bill Willingham touched on that to kind of like prove a point, right? Like mm-hmm. you don't like the, the the general the general public does, doesn't know about Rose Red, but anyway, their relationship is scarred by it, and it's crazy because the entire time you're just thinking, oh, Snow White went off and married Prince Charming after the Seven Dwarves, but this kind of leads up to how Snow White got with the Seven Dwarves, how how that whole thing came about, and holy fuck, how fucking twisted is that whole sh- fucking thing, dude? Yeah, uh, you know it's st- okay. So as Ryan mentioned before, there's this whole little dwarf, and you know the general consensus about dwarves is that they're little grumpy, angry people, and this really holds a holds a, holds the flame to that because the dwarf we're introduced to is this long bearded dwarf who's fucking at first at first appearance like you know it looks like he's trying to chop a tree down, right? Mm-hmm. And he, his tree gets his his tree his uh, beard gets stuck. In a fucking in, in in while he's while he's cutting wood, so Snow White and Red Rose being being the freaking awesome little girls that they are, try to help him, and they cut his beard, and he's like, "No, you're taking away my power." Yeah. And you know, <laughs> that's the voice. I, that's the yeah. same voice I heard. So like, right? Yeah. yeah. Ah. 
right? You yeah. stupid little kids, all right? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, they cause power, but that happens to be the source of his, of his magic power. But when they free him, come to realize he pulls a bag of treasure out of the tree and dips out. Yeah. Now, this happens, this recurrently happens where this guy is, like, stealing these wondrous little treasures from, like, mythical creatures and all this stuff. And it turns out that, you know, dwarves are freaking little shitbags, bro. Like, oh, hell yeah. Dude. <laughs> like, they're, 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 I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that dwarves are probably shitbags. Like, yeah, right? Except for uh, Gimli. I love Gimli. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and then he's stealing all these things. And then he's obviously starting beef with all these mythical creatures that he's stealing from. Now, this, it, it, like, you know, it reoccurs about, like, what, three times? I think so, and yeah, then, something like that, yeah. Yeah, tell you about three times. And, uh, oh, shit, I forgot to mention the bear. Early on in the story, they're, like, you know, they, they, they talk about, you know, the Rosebud's mom and how she went into the forest and she made arrangements with the creatures of the forest so that nothing would come to harm to them. So, obviously, that's a magical forest, talking talking woodland creatures. And this bear shows up in the dead of winter, talking about, oh, I'm cold. Like, please, like, I just, I, I wish you no harm. Please just shelter me. And then it continues on for the rest of the winter. And, uh, you know, uh, Rose, Ro, Red's, Red, Red and White's mom like mentions that I can see past the veil of what you oh, to to what you really are, yeah. and it's weird because like a grown ass man is kind of like making a pass at kids. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, that that part was kind of weird. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of making a pass at kids and like you know freaking like said like you know vows to vows to Snow White that he's gonna marry her, and then you know well, later on by by the third meeting of uh, Rose Red and uh, Snow White meeting the dwarf come to realize that the friggin the bear comes and saves him rescues him literally lobs off his head yeah by doing um, that the 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 enchantment that, ha that has him as a bear this is like oh i'm gonna take you away da -da 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 -da. but snow white's mom isn't having it and goes to the king comes to turn out that freaking mom is one of the golden king's freaking most powerful wizard uh, most powerful witches so they do this whole elaborate plan to kind of like, oh, may, well, you know, we can't have this. I'm, you know, I can't have your daughter marrying my son. So yeah. I'm going to kill your daughter. You still have a second daughter. It's going to be okay. Like, we'll just, we'll, we'll be okay. Right. And freaking then this whole elaborate plan starts off where the mom fakes Snow White's death and sends her off to go live yeah. with her sister, who... In the story, it turns out to be, you know, the evil, the evil, wicked stepmother and, you know, the mirror, the whole mirror, mirror on the wall thing. Yeah. Also, did you, did you kind of notice that in the dialogue um, for the, for the backstory that it, it, everything was kind of rhyming? <laughs> I didn't notice that, but I, I mean, yeah, it I, I, sounds I, I was like... noticing it. I was noticing it like it, it kind of had a rhythm to it, mm -hmm. like, and, and it made sense because it was kind of like telling a story. And, you know, it's kind of like a limerick or like an old, uh, it's, yeah, it's just like an old fable where I feel like it, it's easier yeah. to remember if it rhymes, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's this that, that sets the whole thing up, why they have this, like, because they're broken up, right? So mm -hmm. Rose, went, Rose Red feels like Snow White, like, dipped out on her and fucking mm -hmm. left her behind. And I think that, like, the correlation between what we're seeing in the past and then what we're seeing take place in the present, right? Rose Red fucking gets out of her funk. The, so Rose Red keeps getting haunted by the pig head on the stick. I don't know how else to fucking yeah. I can't remember his name. And then it turns into somebody else to kind of get Rose Red's trust. And I don't know who that is. I don't, is it the, I don't know if it's the mom or not. Like, I, like, she's, no, it's not. No, no, no. We we okay. see that we see that at the end of sixteen. Who it is? It was the embodiment of hope. Of, yeah, it was the body of okay. hope. Okay. Yeah. So so like Colin. now, Colin. All right. Colin. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let me backtrack. So Colin has been haunting Rose Red, saying that something is coming, like a, a darkness or an evil, like for something foreboding. And she's yeah. this is what sends her into this fucking funk. Besides the fact that Boy Blue has died. So yeah. now we get the like like you said the embodiment of hope we find out is who's like getting Rose right out. She then she fucking like all of a sudden she's back, dude. She's fucking doing her little shit. She takes control back of the farm and at the end of this tale her and Snow White reunite, right? Yeah. And I'm, I I want to ask you at this point 
what do you think this series is about? What do you think is really at the center of this series? Like, as in the character? or Overall. As overall. In... Who do you think is, like, the center of the series? Overall? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, per se. It's hard to, it's hard to decipher. Honestly, I want to say it's Snow White. But it's like, I feel like it's the kids. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to, can I tell you? It's not yeah. really putting it. So it's Rose, not, yeah, the no. whole relationship with Rose Red and Snow White is the center of this series. Mm. And it goes back to issue, like the first arc, right? And you're just seeing it constantly, right? Like they're apart, but now they're coming together. And this is going to set us up towards where we're going to end up at the end. And it's really about the dynamic between the two. And then, like, so we get their reu- they're reuniting, right? But then we go straight into fucking Mister Dark, and this is this is like the this is <laughs> we get uh, Frau Totenkinder, aka uh, Bellflower, right? I wish I loved. Are you and she's okay, compl- being, being, being from California, I think Bellflower, I think Bellflower Boulevard and Cerritos, where the Cerritos Auto Square is. Cerritos Auto Square. Auto Square. Yeah. yeah, go see Cal. Go see Cal. Go see Cal. Yeah. yeah, like, you know, just, just growing up in California, you just see a guy in a cowboy hat walking a tiger. That's that's what I see when I hear Bellflower. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. Um, but I love that, like, she comes back and we start seeing, like, the repercussions of what she was doing before. She sent the gold. She's like, you got to make bullets. So, like, all, all this shit that is coming together for her to take down Mr. Dark. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I love, like, you think she's going to get, like, this happy ending. It, it doesn't become that. I read both, so it's kind of hard to... It happened within volume 15, right? Like, what? she, she like, battles him, and she wears him down. She can't trap him again in a box, yeah. right? So she had to yeah. come up with a different way to get him trapped. And she melt the melting of the gold on him. Like, he, like, didn't even expect that she was going to be able to fucking wear him down. She had no idea how powerful it was. Centuries she's been amassing this power and is one yeah. of the most powerful characters in all of Fabledom. Yeah, and it's even it's even mentioned by uh, by the North Wind that she could have been the witch archetype. So oh, in, dude, in Fables, was... yeah, that was crazy. She could have been the witch archetype. She could have been the witch, which yeah. essentially kind of she is though because she what she she I mean not essentially kind of because she is like because like when 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 they go back on, on like you know telling the story of frau totenkinder you see that she's had involvement with all these things and she legitimately is that witch whatever right, witch you're thinking of what he's saying is i think she would have elevated in more power essentially yeah. to where she would have been like all this she wouldn't have run out of the power is yeah she would have kind of been like the north wind and mr dark herself right so that's that's more what he was saying because she like expelled so much of her power to wear him down and then to only have it not be there and what i think is really dope i, I mean there's spoil it we're gonna spoil the shit out of this so i don't really care I follow, you're not caught up with a yeah, lot of it doesn't are, really matter now. it doesn't even really fucking matter right like, so out of here. <laughs> I, I love that she even fakes her death dude yeah. like that was pretty dope like we think that she's we think she dies but really she just did that so that she could go off and kind of have her happy ending that shit, I, that shit broke my heart, like when when they when they first kind of when, when she first died. I was yeah. like, "Damn, damn, she's fuck, <laughs> like, damn." That that like that like, like there's two deaths that happened here that really affected me. It was Boy Blue and Frau Totenkinder. Yeah, you know, I agree. Like I I even forgot. I'll be honest with you. I forgot that she fucking faked her death. <laughs> it's been so long since I read it. So I was like, I was like, I, like in, in my mind, I'm like, is this really how she died? Like I don't remember it happening this way, but. Like, I kind of told you, um, I think when she was fighting Baba Yaga, I'm like, yeah. there's a really dope battle that Frau Tonekinder, this was the yeah. one I was talking about. And yeah. I love the battle between her and Mr. Dark, and her constantly just like, it. like, Mark Buckingham is is phenomenal. He's like such a great fucking artist, and I can't picture this book without with anybody else drawing. I know we have guest artists in between, like, there's the Mr. Dark single-issue story that's in this trade, um... And, and, you know, throughout the series, we always get a break because obviously Mark Buckingham, he's drawing a shit ton of stuff. I mean, he's drawing borders around the fucking panels. So there's a lot that of art that goes favorite, in. That, like that, that was some of my favorite part. Like when during the retelling of Rose Red's story, at the bottom yeah. of each page, you kind of see the evolution. Like, you know, you kind of see the flowers blooming and wilt. Yeah. 
Like, that's, that's like my one of my favorite. Like, dude, and I mean, the borders, the the borders themselves, like, are really some of the like the, some of those like the best stuff. Like, yeah. it's 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 very small, very minuscule, but it's like some of the best things. I I mean, I I totally agree with you. Um, yeah. I do want to ask though, did they show this in the in the book you read online? Like little cutouts for Fable's puppet theater. Yeah, yeah, it was at the end. It was at the end of fifteen. <laughs> of fifteen, like it's like, pretty like, cool uh, that they do that. And uh, then they have the fucking game too, Escape to Wolf Manor. They also <laughs> have like a fucking board game that you can fucking play. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, That's totally in there. That's totally in there. But uh, but uh, yeah. So getting back to it, like, okay, so so for fifteen, like, I mean, it, it was this is there's there's a lot of crazy stuff happening, a lot of side story stuff. Uh, I think uh, one of the one, one, oh, another thing happens is that when Beast, Beast and um, Beauty finally have their baby, which yeah. they were super worried about because they thought it was going to be uh, a monster because you of know, the it, thing Frau Toten get her sewed up. Yeah, and then they yeah. thought it was going to be fine because the baby came out normal, and you know all the other witches on the thirteenth floor were like, "Oh, don't worry." I heard from the other witches that Frau Toten Kinder has a really sick sense of humor. Yeah, which <laughs> right? just makes you love her more. You know? Yeah, exactly. But then going, but and then during during the whole birth process, Beast gets angry because he he doesn't know what's going on, and he's just getting lip from the heavily set nurse who is just like, I hate all you pretties. I hate the pretty ones. You know, the pretty ones are always demanding stuff, and da 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 da, which plays into the stuff that happens, the stuff that sets up for the set for, for uh, in sixteen. Uh, yeah. But uh, all in all, fifteen was great. Um, fifteen was a, was amazing. Um, there's, <laughs> you know, it's funny um, rereading um, fifteen. It's Nurse Spratt, by the way. Um, nurse Spratt. The nurse. So there's something. There's a couple lines that she says in here, and if you pay close attention, she kind of drops a hint at something that she has had done in the past. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't notice it obviously on the first read because I like I wasn't looking for it. Right. But knowing what I know about the end of the book, I was like, oh, fuck. Dude, like, I totally, like, that totally escaped me the first time I read it. But she's a fucking bitch. And she hates beautiful people. I love how Snow White fucking manipulates her because uh, she's basically, like you said, Beast is fucking going at her, right? Yeah. And Snow White wants to take the heat off of, like, her battling Beast and bring it onto her. So, like, dude, she's ruthless. She's ruthless with the... She's, like, basically, like, you know... At least if you're ugly on the outside and you're you're pretty inside, that can save you. But nothing can save you when you're fucking ugly on the inside as well as the out. And I was like, oh god damn. I was like, dude, Bars. you're like, I was like, dude, you're a cold bitch, so like you're a cold Bars. ass bitch. But we get the end of the issue, right? And we see Beast Kid, Beast and Beauty's Kid, turns into a fucking beast. Yeah. Which we learn in Volume 16, which we'll talk about. I'll just say it real quick so that we can kind of talk about the story. Yeah. The curse of Beast has now transferred on to his kid. And yeah. we learn that because the whole point of Fable Volume 16 is they're realizing, <laughs> they're realizing the power, right, of belief. Yeah. And of um, what I don't know how to word it, but like the archetypes of stuff, right? Like, oh, heroes always win. Right? They mm -hmm. may have their trials and tribulations, but in the end, superheroes will prevail. So Pinocchio yeah. goes to who, Ozma. Who, wait, who we see in the early iterations, the Pinocchio and uh, Fly Flycatcher, Catcher, and Boy they're Blue. big friggin' comic Com book nerds. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. They go to the comic shop every week and go pick up their comics together. It's, 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 awesome. it's, 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 I love it. I love it. It's awesome. And and so he's, he goes to Ozma and he's like, we got to create a super team. So now they're recruiting and they're making costumes and shit and like Beast is supposed to be a part of it, but then he can't fucking transform. And that's yeah. where we learn about that. Yeah. But I think it's, I love how they play, like that's one of the things I really love that, that uh, Fables plays with is the power of belief and how that empowers the Fables. Or yeah. now we're learning like archetypes and like, you know, um, the ideas of superheroes always winning or good always prevailing like that kind of yeah. stuff and like how he plays it it's brilliant dude yeah it's and what i what, what 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 i uh what i really like is how it affects even fables that even even belief within the fables themselves because look at what it did to uh to stinky or brock blue something brock, brock blue, blue heart 
Yeah, yeah Brock, Brock Luhart. Like what did they do to Brock, uh, Brock Luhart? Like, you know, he went from just regular old talking, talking fable to now he's able to transform into this hulking, monstrous, freaking badger thing. Yeah. Right? And yeah. like, you know, whenever he gets angry, he like, he flashes on freaking, what do you call, on uh, uh, Geppetto's freaking wood people bodyguards. Yeah. Right? Just straight flashes on him like, ah, right? Hulks out. And then, uh, holy crap, that's something that he's never done before, and it's all because of the power of belief. The belief, even within the fables, not just the Mundies, no, you it's... know, because he started his own little uh, boy blue cult, and he's like, he's, he's like the man, at, he's the man at the pew, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, it's crazy. Um, yeah, so, like, just belief in it himself, and, like, wh- where I thought 16 was going, like, I thought they were gonna have it out and have this big-ass freaking you know, Avengers type battle in New York where a monster is attacking the city and then all of a sudden the people of New York see these superheroes come in and I feel like that was going to, imp- you know, they wanted it to empower the the fables who were dressed up as superheroes and it'll make them stronger to face the, the to face the dark one, the the, right. the, the freaking, yeah, the, yeah, right? <sighs> you know, I mean, obviously it doesn't turn out like that because Frau Totenkinder is a fucking badass. Uh, I mean, well, this is after. He he obviously escaped from the gold cask, and right. uh, now he's at the border of Haven, where you know, Flycatcher is doing all he can to stop him. And it's crazy. There's a panel where it's like half and half. It's like Haven is like beautiful, lush, golden, and literally a line splitting down the middle where friggin' uh, uh, Dullin, who we find, who who's a, the 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 dark man, who right. he, we find out his name. He's literally standing there. Just waiting, you know. Yeah, like he doesn't eerie care. As shit. He's just yeah. waiting, right? And so it's like, literally at the barrier of Haven, and I thought that was one of the coolest things. I'm just like, damn, look how powerful this fool is. And also, kind of how it kind of kind of flexes how powerful Flycatcher's magic is, right? Because right, but he, he's also weakening because yeah. of, like, he's saying, like, I can only hold this up for so long. Yeah, right. But I feel I feel a part of that has to do with the the overlying fear because you know the uh, Dullin he fe- he feeds on fear and he uses it to his to his advantage. And I feel like the impending doom that's uh, that's uh, that's like literally at the edge of there uh, at the edge of Haven is starting to have its effect on the people. So I feel like that's kind of strengthening Dullin and weakening Flycatcher's hold. Yeah, you know. I- uh, what I, you know, another thing about like the power of belief. What I think is cool is we're starting to get the inklings of like, you know, they say that there's no magic in our world, right? Mm-hmm. But there is, and they're realizing like there's just an untapped magic that we don't even know that could be even more powerful than anything in the homelands has ever seen. The the standout for me here was um, the Northwind, right? Yeah, because oh, he finally God. he finally learns about ghost. The the Zephyr, the the child of Snow and Bigby that shouldn't exist, and he said Zephyrs are killed on sight the minute they're born, mm-hmm. and because they're 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 uh, they're freaks of the nature, they're right. they're they're abominations, they're monstrosities, yeah, monstrosities right. and abominations. So like. and it's it's crazy too because like he's he's saying that he has to kill Ghost, and he at first his his opinion is like oh it's Snow White that is the reason that he was born. And then his, uh, I forgot what his, uh, the people that like live at, at his castle, the creatures. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm the just winds. referring, I'm, yeah, I'm just referring to them as sprites at this point. Okay, right. Yeah. So, the, <laughs> so they, they say, um, actually, it's probably your son. I mean, look at him. He's the big bad wolf. So he probably is a reason that this abomination was born. But the battle that the North Wind has with himself, because he, Loves his grandchildren, right? He's trying so to repair much. the rela- trying to repair the relationship with with Big B, and uh, there's just like this to me was like all about North Wind. This whole trade, like we yeah. you think it's about you, like you said, you thought it was gonna be a battle. No, this is about the North Wind, and it's about yeah. he explains to Big B like I have to kill, I have to kill him, unless like you said you have a way to kill me, then do it now so that I don't have to kill your son. Yeah, and he because, has to kill like, because he made a vow. Like, he right. made a decree that, and he, and he's, he, he's, like, he's all about, oh, I'm a man of my word, and I'm a ruler, and what, is, what, good, is a, what good is a ruler if he can't live up to his vows and all this stuff, right? And, like, you know, he finally confronts him, 
and Big B is like ready to go, ready to fucking fight. Even though he's yeah. he was probably gonna gonna lose, but then like, you know, then then, then the North Wind like really flexes and is like just stops him and slams him against a tree without even yeah. moving a muscle. He's like, right. I have powers you I have power you don't even you can't even imagine. Right. right. But it really it's like he's saying that because Bigby's pissed, like he's got this resentment, right? He's like, You never loved my mom. He's like, I yeah. did I did, but like the wind, my I changed, right? Yeah. Like the, his outlook on stuff changes with the wind. Yeah. So one year he could fucking love you and the next year he can hate you because that's the nature of wind. And it's the nature of changing with the wind, right? Mm-hmm. And so Bigby's like, Well then change. Don't why don't you change now? Why don't you fucking right here be different and not follow what you decreed? He's basically he's worried about Bigby. He's like like Bigby's not gonna be able to defeat the Dark Man, right? Yeah. So he his out. I love I love this dude. It's funny. yeah. His out. His, his, his out, out was his out in order to not kill Ghost, and in turn saves everyone. Is he takes the Dark Man? within his own box because every single archetype has their own box that they can go in and escape from the world and and cease to exist it cease to exist yeah so he takes the fucking dark man in his own and you see the dark man have fear for the first time where he's like no no i'll leave them i'll leave them i relent like not be (laughs) yeah and he just fucking takes him in dude yo 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 i i love how their first encounter like because when frat before frat and kinder fought Dullin, it was the North Wind who says, I'm here to issue a challenge between you and Frau Totenkinder. Right. So when they see meet, meet up each other w- with each other again, like, you know, Dullin's kind of all like, oh, are you here to issue another challenge? Like, uh, like, you little bitch? Like, who do you have next for me to kill? And he's like, no, there's gonna, and then, you know, North Wind is, is like, no, nah, there's gonna be no fight. I just, I'm just here to, I'm just here to kill you. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Whoo, cold. Yeah, cool. so, like, and that's the cool thing, too, about, like... Did you notice uh, the North Wind suit? I mean, yeah, it it's like, Kirby. He, no, yeah, it was, like, like Kirby-esque. Kirby costume, yeah, oh, for sure. Like a oh, Kirby-esque yeah. freaking... Totally. Uh, uh, Eternals freaking yes. costume. I'm so was, glad like... you brought that up, because, like, <laughs> I, I thought that when I was reading it, but I finished it before you even started Volume 15, I think. Yeah. Or, I, I think... Oh, I finished it on the weekend, so it's been, like, a week since I read it, but... Yeah. Yeah, I was like, dude, this is total... Total fucking Kirby vibes. It's, it's total celestial, getting. dude. Total celestial. And I, I love this about the series, too. Like, we see characters really, like, they go through waves of growth, right? Like, mm-hmm. and Not it, a single it, character is wasted. Not a so, single and, and character is wasted. Every single character has their own arc, and they all are different. From, from issue one until the last issue, every character has changed. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't ignore anybody. And I, mm-hmm. I love that about this. I book. love that. That's Fucking that's love that's it. that's the beauty of this. That, to me, that's like the like the real, true, underlying beauty of this. There is not a single character wasted, even right down to uh, uh, Bluffkin, down to freaking Stinky, down to freaking Thumbelina. <laughs> like, like yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it, it's not a there's not a single character where, even though when you meet him in passing, you're like, oh, he's just a security guard. Turns out, you know. Friggin' Honest John is friggin' a spy for, for the Emperor, and then enter, en- ends up being the, 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 wielder, the wielder of friggin' uh, Flycatcher's sword. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not only are they not wasted, but their growth is just so exponential and just turns from something completely different than first impressions, right? Exactly. Because in know? the beginning, you probably hated the North Wind. I was like, this dude's a friggin' asshole. Fuck him. Yeah. And then like, look at like, this. I got, I got, I got, I got like parental flashbacks of my dad. Like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, you like, fucking piece of shit. You, you walked out, you shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> shit. Exactly. You yeah, fucking. Yeah. yeah, but you know what I mean. Like, and it, it, it's beautiful. Like, like not a character is wasted. And before, before, before I lose, before I lose this, I just wanted to bring up that it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in uh, the beginning of sixteen, where. Pinocchio rolls up in a wheelchair, <laughs> like like <laughs> Professor X. <laughs> Professor X, and like yeah. you know, and, and he pulls up, and he's like, and you know, uh, Big B's like, what what the fuck is going on? It's like, oh no 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 no, it's not that I'm crippled or anything, or I can't walk or anything. It's just you know, I'm, I, you know, for for certain teams, there's always a guy in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, speaking of uh, speak, speaking of Pinocchio, when he goes back and he starts talking about all the times 
he couldn't. Um, oh yeah, well, that was he, in volume fifteen, yeah. right? That with the blue fairy, because yeah, the, the blue fairy is technically his mom, and he's all pissed yeah. because he's like he almost had a chance with Rapunzel, he almost had a chance with Cinderella, and he almost yeah. had a chance. I think there's another princess. There's I can't another remember. girl. Yeah, no, there, there was a, just a regular girl. It was like a regular. Yeah. I think it was a Monday that yeah. he was talking about, and it was funny because he he's just like it's just all repressed sexual like just sexual repression that yeah. he's just letting out and he's wailing on the blue fairy who's technically his mom right? yeah <laughs> like, yeah oh i know i mean just, i love pinocchio pinocchio is one of like he's never really i don't want i don't think he's ever really gotten a huge focus i know he's been in like really big arcs yeah, you know, like the Wooden Soldiers arc in Volume Four, and then with whole the Geppetto coming back, but he's ne- like he's just always kind of there and has those like moments within the big arcs that just make me fucking laugh. Like he is he's, one of the funniest. He's, he's never he's never had his own arc where he's like the main focal point, but a lot of arcs involve Pinocchio. Yes, you know, I agree. yeah, yeah. So he's he's not. I wouldn't say he's he's like a primary character, but he's definitely not a secondary character. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know what I mean. Right. He's kind of um, in between. So, the, I mean, man, 16 was good. And, you know, when I first, when, okay, because uh, when I because I was able to get 15 digitally, and I messed up because when, when you have the list of downloads, it goes numerical. And I got 15, but I got deluxe edition 15, and it was like, it was like 50 issues or something. Or like, it was like, it was like, it was like 20 issues. And I was like, fuck, this is like, way ahead and i messed up and i had no more downloads for the month i only have seven downloads for the month but luckily for me I, I like we had the trade at work and when oh, i pulled okay. the trade yeah when i pulled the trade out and i looked at the cover i'm like oh shit they're about to be superheroes or no my first initial reaction was like wait are they about to like introduce like superhero archetypes that we didn't know existed like there's a whole like you know different there's there's a, there's a fable town but for superheroes that we don't know about and they're about to come here and fucking help out the fables but no it's 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 fucking it's fucking pinocchio assembling his own f-men like <laughs> yeah i mean you never know what to expect it's yeah like yeah you really like when you think you, you think it's gonna go one way it doesn't go that way and mm-hmm. that's uh, again another testament to like the great writing and plotting and like world building that bill willingham does in this series yeah. I mean, I, I know we've talked about her before, but Shelley Bond, like, editing this series, like, what a task this must have been to make sure that it was, like, very, like, that it flowed right, that it was cohesive, and that it kind of all made sense. Like, not to say that Bill Willingham needed somebody to, like, tell him what to do. It shows editors when a play, book... I don't know, no, editors have to play an important role. It shows because, when a book has a good editor on it, is what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, next time you talk to Shelley, tell her I said thank you, because this is fantastic. I will. This is fucking fantastic shit. Uh, fucking kudos. <laughs> this yeah, is, this is like oh, and uh, when I was reading the when I was reading the trade, like I had to look up like when did when did when did sixteen come out? Like when did like uh, the issues, the actual single issues for sixteen come out? And I was like, I think it was for uh, Fables one hundred. It was like freaking June of eleven. I'm like, yo, that was like just recently. Like yeah. holy crap! Like it, it it like this shit is fucking amazing. Like. And it went yeah. on for this long? Holy fuck. That is a daunting task. And the fact that Bill Willingham and friggin' everybody, every, everybody involved did it for this long and did such a great job. And, like, honestly, it's just getting better. It's just it's getting better. Like, now we're trying to, now we're, 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 we're I feel like we're, we're approaching the cusp of where we're seeing the full potential of a lot of these characters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Talk about, and, po- and, talk about and, potential. Wait till the next arc when we find out who the new North Wind is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. So, okay. So when they were talking about, you know, uh, when, when the guy, the, the, the guy who, who was part of the, the guild who boxes in these freaking evil, evil ass freaking, uh, these evil ass fables mm-hmm. and boxes them in, we come to find out that, you know, when, when when fables when when when, the, when like these the when, when like people at the North Wind and Hope decide to off themselves, there has to be a replacement because you because there has to be a replacement because you can't just kill the North Wind, so someone right. has to take his place. So now we're gonna get a new North Wind, and I suspect I know who's gonna be the new dark uh, the new the new dark one. It's gonna be oh I, we didn't even talk about that. So Nurse Platt. <laughs> 
Nurse, Nurse Pratt. Nurse Pratt. Right? Nurse Spratt. Spratt. Spratt, right? So she's outside. She's like, uh, you know, sitting outside all grumbly, grumbly, grumbly. And uh, Dulland, who's on his way to uh, Haven, encounters her. And like, you know, it's like, and they make a deal, right? Oh, I, I, I want to be pretty. And I want my own prince. And, bef- and, and, and I want all the pretty fables to become ugly, right? I want them all. Uh, this is what I want. And I'll tell you everything you want to know. I will be your loyal servant and all that. So he makes a deal. So she gets sent to uh, formal fable town to his dark castle in the middle yeah. of New York. And she's over here living her, living her best life. And he sends like a handsome guy to be her fencing coach right and you know it, 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 at first inklings i'm thinking oh uh Dullin is gonna have her marry the fencing coach but then he's like no 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 no. you're gonna marry me like i'm we're we're gonna be together you're gonna be my queen yeah. and then you know before before he goes off uh back before he goes back to haven to to to, to further push on his his uh impose his power on mm-hmm. the borders of haven he, he turns her into this sexy Michelle Pfeiffer in a black, no, it's Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman in a black dress. And I'm like, that's crazy. And then when everything happened with the North Wind and Dullin, I'm like, someone has to take the Dark One's place. It's going to be Nurse, Nurse Spratt. I'm like, it has to be because she's the only one that holds that kind of hatred in, her, in his heart, yeah. in her heart against everyone in Fable Town, right? Mm-hmm. So especially especially the, the top tier high echelon fables, like, you yeah. know. So it's it's just crazy to me. Like, not not a single character is wasted. I know. Not it's a crazy. single character is wasted. <laughs> I know. It's so crazy, dude. It you really know? is. Like, he. I mean, he, he reading he volume knows exactly one, what he's doing. Yeah, reading volume one, you probably couldn't even have first seen any of this happening. No, no, no. None of this. I, like, you never would have expected. I, the thing is, I never. Okay, reading volume one and understanding what was going on, volume one and volume two, and understanding what was going on, I couldn't see past the the war between the empire and fable town i couldn't see past that but now we're way past that and it's this whole thing and i remember you and nick asked me like what you thought was gonna ha- what i thought was gonna happen and i t- i always said the most important things in in, in war is the aftermath so mm-hmm. now we're at the aftermath and all this crazy stuff is going on and it's just holy crap i couldn't have imagined any of this yeah this is because some, now we're really in, this is far past bro like and we're not yeah. still got, and we still have six more volumes to read. Yeah. Like <laughs> you know I mean? I'm so. this is fantastic. I'm so glad like you and I were talking about it before we started recording. Like I think that that Fables is incredibly wordy. It's not like Watchmen wordy, but like they, they there's just a lot of dialogue. A whole lot of dialogue, which is totally fine. Yeah. But like if you're trying to cram two trades in a week, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a chore. But it's, it's it's amazing. It's good. It's just getting better and better. At the same time, we're approaching the end, and it's a little bittersweet, you know. But at the same, but you know, it's a little bittersweet. But like, I'm 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 a bit relieved that it's almost over because, yeah. holy crap! And like, knowing what I know now, I, I have no idea what we're in for coming up next. Right. And you what's know? crazy is like to think about it. Like, it's a 150 issue series, so we're gonna have read. 150 issues of one series in less than a year. Like that, that's a fucking, fucking lot of flex, yeah, bro. it's a fucking lot mm. of comic books. And not to mention all the other shit we read. Like you were talking about yeah. your Goodreads uh, yesterday when we were talking about the future state shit, and you were like, "Oh, I'm a little behind. Like I'm ahead of schedule. I've already read 56 of my 200 for the mm-hmm. year, and I'm not even in the third month of the year. So it's like, yeah. I, but the thing is, the thing is, after after Fables. I just know I'm gonna ki- I'm gonna crank it and kick it into full gear because yeah. you know, after fables and I'm and I'm glad that freaking uh, we're future not stating, like you know too. doing future stating like I, I feel like I'm gonna smash through it. Man, I just haven't touched anything aside from yeah. future state and what we will, our weekly reads. Yeah, and I mean I just I'm, read really fast. That's yeah. That's kind of a it's kind of a negative sometimes for me because I don't necessarily mean to read fast to power through stuff although i do kind of try to power through my fucking read pile (laughs) but sometimes i read it so fast that like i can't retain it as much not everything some stuff really sits with me yeah like last night i fucking knocked out the impending blindness of billy scott and and that book is 
fucking dope. It's so good. Yeah, like Zoe Thorogood, dude. I've been, I've been, I've been screaming high praises for for Zoe Thorogood for a while. Like it's she's amazing. She's good, now. She's good dude. But yeah, uh, you know, to cap it off for fables though, um, like you said. It's bittersweet, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad it's almost over. I mean, I've already read this series, so it's my second time reading it. It's not, but like again, I I sometimes forget little things that happen. I don't remember every fucking moment that happened. Like, and how could I really? There's you know so I mean? many like, moments. There's so, so many moments. So that's what's kind of cool about about this, since it's been a while since I read it. Like you said, it, 2011 was when volume one of the issues in volume 16 came out. Mm-hmm. I think, like I, I told you before, I. St- started finishing the second half of the series right before it almost was over Mm. so i got like volume 22 maybe a few months or a year after Mm. after actually ended so it's it's been a while it's been like eight years it's just it's it's one of my favorite series of all time i'm i wish more people read it It, now it's getting easier because they're doing the compendiums i think the second one is coming out soon and like I know it's probably hard for people that like watch our podcast if they're not reading fables to like they probably just some of them probably just skip this episode and I and yeah. I don't blame them. Yeah. But I don't I don't really care either because I want to talk about fables with you. So yeah. and it's a lot to it's a lot to ask anybody to read a twenty two ish a twenty two volume series yeah. with you. But I'm glad you did it and I'm glad we we talked about it. I'm glad we're sharing it with other people because like if you didn't follow along with us and you end up finishing the series, you could always you know, watch these videos once you're done and just, like, kind of hear our thoughts. You know what I mean? Like, um, it's been fun to do. And, you know, three episodes left. We got three more weeks of Fables, and it will be done. So, um, Yeah. And then we get to pick our next book to torture us for the next year. (laughs) Oh, I don't know if I want to do another series. I know I said said Scalped. I mean, it's only five weeks, so it's not that bad. But, uh, like uh, East we'll, we'll West, t- I, East I think we'll West t- would be uh, how many? How many volumes of East ten. West is there? Yeah, ten volumes. Oh, that's like five weeks. That's a, I mean, we could do two in a week, like we did yeah, this. Yeah. yeah. Because there are only five issues, so it's. Re- I mean, dude, we yeah. just. Re- we, I mean, these two volumes alone is over. I mean, I don't know. There's like thirteen or fourteen issues. Yeah, it's thirteen or fourteen. It's on on. Okay, so for the main continuity, it's like ten issues, and then at the end of. Uh, what do you call it? At the end of 15, I believe, there were like three, there was like one issue where it was just like little side stories. Yeah. Or two, so, one or two issues where it was just side stories. Yeah, we'll, we'll decide what we're going to read. I don't know. We'll figure, we'll figure it, it we'll out. Figure. We got, we got a few weeks to figure it out, but. We'll fucking wing it. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's all I got on Fables. Um, I don't know if you want to talk real quick about um, what we're excited for next week. Um, uh, yeah, let me pull up, let me pull up my. My hood, my, my, uh... I mean, obviously, I mean, goes without saying, Infinite Frontier is mm-hmm. coming out. Suicide Squad 1 is coming out. Yes. Uh, we got the new Batman arc that's starting. It has the Robin backup by Joshua Williamson, which is going to lead into the Robin ongoing. Yeah. So, I'm... Uh, we have the, uh, we have Firepower. Yeah, so we got Berserker, finally. Yeah. I thought it wasn't coming out till the end of the month. I gave somebody the wrong information. I was like, oh. I said, I said the end of the month, too. I said <laughs> March 24th. I was like, <laughs> I, was like I thought that's what they said. Because it was supposed to come out February 24th, I thought. Star Wars High Republic, Noctera, which that hardcover was dope. I, I haven't read it. I flipped through I, it. I, 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 got I, it. I, I didn't read it because I can't look at a picture and then look at a script, look at a picture and look at a script. But it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like... Oh, I didn't I, even realize that though. Right. The caption bubbles aren't on the art. No. Okay. Yeah, I, I only it's, I glanced it's, at it. It's 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 left page. It's left page script, right page art. Okay. I mean, this is I can't. I'm gonna do a little video on that hardcover because it's beautiful fucking package. Yeah. Like it's awesome. But I'm excited for Noctera one, and then we got our boy Swamp Thing, number one. Rom V, Mike Perkins. Let's go. It's gonna be right. dope. I can't mm-hmm. wait. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a small week for me. Personally, it's a small like, week for me too. Like I only um, have. I'm, I'm getting I, the Extra Swords hardcover. Like I'm already like I'm like I'm like six same. chapters into Extra Swords, but I I waited so you know I was just like you know what I'm just gonna read it in uh, in hardcover form and Wait, just do it like you, that. When are you gonna read it though? What? When are you planning, yeah, when are you gonna read it? Because I I'm, I want to do an episode on the whole thing with you. Well, when were you planning on reading it? Well, I'm I'm well I, I stopped reading the individual issues. Right. Are you gonna read the hardcover right away? I'm gonna I'm gonna start 
right away. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it in one sitting though. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. Well, let me know when you're close to. Fin- I can power through. Well, 22 issues a lot. I could probably yeah. power through it in like a weekend though. So yeah. just let me know when you're getting towards the end. Then I'll read it, and then it'll be fresh enough. I mean, I still remember most of what happened, so it's not like if we wait a couple of weeks to talk about it, I won't yeah. remember. You know? So yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Yeah, yeah that's all I got. And. If you're not already following us, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at the Comic Lounge. You can follow Dylan at the Dillbot on Instagram. Uh, make sure you throw your comments or suggestions down below, or you can also email us at comicloungepod at gmail.com. And make sure you like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid goes up. And on that note, we're out. Later, buds.